Good morning, you guys. It's me, Kiana, coming at you today. And before I actually get ready for the day, um, I wanted to come to you guys and let you know and fill you guys in on what happened yesterday. Um, if you've been following my videos, as I know you have, um, you've already uh, basically heard me tell you a little bit about uh, what I'm about to embark on at that moment, what I was about to embark on. But now, what I am embarking on. Um, also, um, I did a video about that, giving you a little bit of background um, about some issues that, um, you know, there's some issues that I went through growing up, some things that, you know, be on my mind at times, and I shared all of that with you guys uh, as much as possible. Uh, if you go way back in videos, it depends on how long you've been watching me, um, you know, you, you probably know most of those things. And also, if you've been watching me for a while, you probably know a little bit more about the situation. Um, but I did that video first, and then after that video, I did the video making the actual call um, to my dad live. Um, that was the first time I called him and talked to him and seen him in three years. Actually, it was almost three years to the day. Uh, Pootie, the last time I saw um, my father was, uh, it was five days after Pootie was born, so that would be the 19th. Um, ironically, Pootie's birthday is on the 18th, and he's going to come to that as well. But um, on March the 19th, that was the last time I saw my father, 2009. Um, and that was the last time he saw Pootie. Pootie was five days old. Um, so that was the first time I've talked to my father. Um, and I did that live, uh, first time I've talked to him in three years. I uh, did that live on camera, and I told you guys why I decided to do that. Um, I'm going to reiterate why I decided to do that in a second. Um, but we uh, we talked live, and I disconnected the call when it got to the part where he was asking for my mailing information, my phone number, and all that kind of stuff. So um, we talked further than you guys actually saw, and we talked for about a half an hour all together. And at the end of the call, he was like, well, what you doing now? And I was like, nothing. And he was like, I'm going to be over there in a few minutes. So uh, he lives probably, if you go on the, the Beltway, he lives probably about 20 minutes, not even that away. So he was there. He was here in like 20, 25 minutes at the most. And um, I saw him walking up the walkway, and he was looking at the van and everything because my father didn't even know I actually owned a business. You have to understand, um, my father, uh, let alone, he didn't know I owned one business, let alone three total. Um, you have to understand that my father, the last time he saw me was when he took me um, to, recuper to recuperate at my mom's house. So I wouldn't have to recuperate at the shelter. The shelter let me recuperate at my mom's house um, just for comfort so I could be around my mom and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that was the last time he saw me. So last time he saw me, I was homeless. So he didn't know anything after that. Um, he did receive, I did, um, probably about when I was working at the cab company, I sent him, uh, we had did family portraits and I did send him, we did them on postcards for, um, wishing everybody a happy holiday. And I did send him that. That was about, mm, I would say about six months after we left the homeless shelter. This was before any business. So uh, he still remembers that I sent that. He did receive it. But we've moved again since then. We've moved, remember, from the cab company, we moved to the gated community, from the gated community to here. So he, you know, he didn't have an actual address. The, ad, the last known address that he had was... Um, where the cab company was, the first place we moved to um, after leaving the shelter. So, um, uh, so, what, else, what, what part I want to discuss first? So, he, uh, you know, he was looking at the van and, um, you know, he was, you, you could tell he was, he was, he, he showed some, some level of, of being proud. You could tell it in his face. I was peeking through your curtains like a little girl. And, uh, peeking through the blinds and daddy had opened the door so that when he comes up you know the door would be open 
Now, the other thing is, you guys don't have, y'all don't realize is that he's never met my husband in person. Yeah, he's never met my husband in person. Now, uh, he has, you know, received the the, the uh, family portrait, so he has seen him as far as on a, pa a paper or, or portrait, but he never met my husband in person, nor does he know any details about, you know, um, how much my husband has over, overcame as far as his disability. He don't know, you know, he didn't know um, that my husband adopted Pooty. Uh, he didn't know that my husband, uh, we changed my, my you know, Pooty's, Pooty's name, whole name. Well, he didn't know none of this stuff. He didn't know that my husband has went above and beyond making sure, even though he's disabled, taking care of us financially and everything, helping us start business. He didn't know none of these things. So, this was new to my husband. Very new. And, um, very quickly, let me, let me address this too. Chuck is one of the main people that's always in my ear about, I want you to, to contact your father. Chuck has been doing this literally since we met. Literally. Well, not since we met, because we were friends first. Literally since we were married. He's been doing this for three years. So, um... Chuck has been a very, um, he's been one that has been planting that seed mentally and, and in a sense spiritually, um, for me to branch off and reach out and do something on my end to, to do all that I can do that's in my control to re, to reunite the relationship. So, um, he comes through the door and as soon as he came to the door I uh I hugged him he hugged me um he shook Chuck's hand he saw Pootie now mind you you had to understand that he last time he seen Pootie Pootie was five pounds ten ounces the smallest baby I that has ever been in my family he was five pounds ten ounces in a little uh car seat that's the last time he saw him, five days old. So to see this little toddler running around with this rock head running around, you know, hyperactive and toys and train tables and all that kind of stuff, he's like, you know, that that probably was like, wow, you know, that that's just a, you know, it's a it's a heck of a transition to go from seeing somebody as a, as a, a five day old. To not even seeing them in between, just seeing them as three. You know what I'm saying? So he hugs Pootie and he playing with Pootie and everything. So uh, the visit went very well, you guys. Um, we talked. Uh, we also talked about, um, you know, he talked about the businesses and Chuck. It was so funny because Chuck always. I don't know if I've told you guys this. I probably have, like briefly, but Chuck always complains that I'm always working, always doing something. I'm all. And I am. Uh, you guys, that's why when people be like, you know, do something or move, and I'm like, y'all really don't know. I never relax. Never. This is my relaxing time. When I do a video, this is relaxing time for me. Yeah, that's relaxing time. Um, and that's it. So, I, I don't go to sleep till like almost 2 in the morning, and I wake up. I'm the first, last one to go to sleep, 2 in the morning, and I'm the first one to wake up. I go to sleep 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm up at seven. That's just me. So that's why I'm able to answer y'all questions and all that kind of stuff because I'm always working. Um, so the funny part is Chuck really saw where I get it from because as all right, my father uh, was off yesterday, if you want to call it that, because business owners are never off. But um, he wasn't, you know, taking care of the trucks or nothing like that. So when we were sitting talking in the midst of it he was on his phone <laughs> like six times so and it wasn't personal calls it was all business and and talking to some of the drivers that and, and asking them did they do their drop-offs and uh will they have to do loads tomorrow and all kinds of stuff like that and chuck just looked at me and was like now i know i said i told you I said, Chuck, and you have to understand, 
we've only been open, you know, we've only had our businesses, any of them open, only for, of course, under three years. I said, so my father has always owned his own businesses. Yes, it's not, it's, you know, it's it's been, uh, it's expanded and stuff like that, but he's always owned his own businesses for, since, like, I was, I was, I think I was, since I was grown, since I turned, like, I was, like, 18. I, mind you, I'm mid-30s now. I'm 35 years old. So, I was, like, so imagine, you know, if he's doing this after owning his businesses for all these years, then, yeah, of course I'm going to always be busy because I'm, I'm in the building stage of my life, you know. So, I just, he just found it funny. I found it funny. I was, like, now you know. And it was just so many times that, my father was doing stuff or he did something or said something and Chuck was like oh my god I know where you get it from now like Chuck was able to distinguish characteristics that I have of my mom and characteristics I have of my father instantly like when the feistiness he was like see that's your mother right there you understand what I'm saying and then the stuff about being uh, business minded and and always about business and always trying to build and trying to juggle this and that and that. He was like, that's your dad right there. So it was just it was just funny because Chuck, well, every time when he would notice it, I would know that he was going to notice it. So I would just sit there like this, and then all of a sudden I look over and Chuck looking dead at me. So he knew, he was like, mm-hmm, I see. I already know why. So it was just funny. Um, he he actually, you know, he he... He repeated it twice because I didn't answer him the first time. So he was like, I'm so proud of you. And uh, I didn't answer the first time. So he repeated it like four minutes later and he said it again. And because um, I told him everything that's going on, I told him about the cookbook. I gave him um, I gave him the copy of uh, um, the cover that's going to be on the cookbook, the pictures. I gave him um, some other little flyers and stuff. And I showed him my website and I showed him some other stuff that I was that I'm doing in the works that you guys don't you know about I showed him all that kind of stuff and he was like wow he was like um you know uh, and he said that and also he uh we talked about uh what else we talk about oh he of course told me he loved me um we also got into why I don't call because you got to understand that my father's number as y'all heard in the video him say uh, when y'all heard him on the phone uh, his number has never changed in 20 years literally I've always it's a bad this is the bad to say but I've always known my father's number always by heart and so I always can reach my father and you know, it's a part of me, just like he says, I couldn't find you. He didn't know my mom's exact address because when he dropped us off, he dropped us off. You know, he came in for a little while. We all laughed and talked and stuff like that. But that was three years ago, and he didn't know the exact exact address. Now, it's a part of me that think, you know, well, you knew the area. I would have knocked on every door until I found it. That's a part of me. Now, that's what I would do. Um... This is the thing. We got into, he wanted to know why I don't call him or why I detach myself from him at times. And this has been over the years since I've been grown several times. This time it's been three years, but sometimes it's been four. Sometimes it's been a year. So this is nothing new to us. I've always done this. And after talking to him, I explained to him, and I'm going, to, I'm going to share this with you guys. I'm the type of person, because I've received love, even though I have a small family, I received a huge amount of love. You have to understand I was the baby of my whole family. Besides my children, I am the baby of my whole family, even now. Okay? And I'm talking about distant relatives and everything. I'm the baby. So, um, the thing is, is that if you receive love in abundance, it's kind of hard for you to get. If you've received 110% love, it's kind of hard for you to receive 75%. Give you another analogy. If you're accustomed to eating filet mignon, it's kind of hard for you to go back and get 
a, a hot dog. Okay. So, after talking to him, I was like, Dad, you have to understand that I am the type that if people don't love me the way that I want to be loved, the way that I feel I deserve to be loved, then I'd just rather not have you at all. And because I know, and, and, as, and some people say that's, you're supposed to be like that because that's set the standard for the type of how people treat you. But the thing is, is that sometimes, and I'm not saying all the time, sometimes, see, we have to evaluate this state. These things are based on case on case basis. It's, it's not no, it's not no straight answer for anything like this because we're dealing with different personalities of people. We're dealing with different reasons, different backgrounds. We're dealing with environmental issues. We're dealing with um, family issues. We're dealing with what we're accustomed to. All these kinds of things make up who we are how we handle certain things and all that so we have to sometimes understand and accept that people sometimes can only love you the way that they know how to love for one and I'm not saying this is necessarily true of him I'm just saying that sometimes we have to look at things like this and this kind of thinking comes with maturity it comes with age it comes with wisdom because I know for a fact the younger me would just be like if you can't, and I've done it I've done it to him and I've done it to several people if you can't love me the way that I want to be loved and the way that I deserve to be loved then I don't need your love at all none of it and I just will exclude you out of my life I will release you I am the queen of releasing, I told you guys that I will release you now, I will try my best not to. I will try every... Er Are you okay, Pooty? Uh. Okay. I will try my best, and I will try as many avenues as I can to resolve things. But if nothing comes, if no resolution is, is available, Kiana will release you and have no problem with it. I will release you and pray for you and everything, but I will release you. I will release you behind. So that's what I'm accustomed to doing. But again, at times we have to understand that and also it's not necessarily that they give not again, not just him, I'm talking about in general, you guys. Sometimes people can only give you the love that they know how to give. For whatever reasons, I may have been damaged in some way shape or form whether that's by my own parents, whether that's by a man, whether that's by friends turning their back on me, whether that's what, you know, not having parents in my life, having a lack thereof of them, I could have been damaged because of that. And when I go into a relationship, I could love after being like that or being damaged in that way, but I can only love you to a certain extent because I don't know anything else. I only can give you the love that I know to give, meaning the, whatever I define love as. I only can give you that. I can give you that to the max, but that's all I can give you. So we have to understand that sometimes people only know a certain kind of love or a certain level of love. That doesn't mean they don't love. And that's what we sometimes have to come to the understanding. Um, just because you can only give me a certain kind of love that you only know how to give. That doesn't mean that you don't love me. It just means you're giving all of you. You're giving all of that you know and all that you have. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm satisfied with that. That doesn't mean I'm accustomed to that. And also, I've shown that that doesn't mean that I'm going to accept that. But we have to sometimes understand that it may be a fact. That may be a factor. That may be, no, they don't, that mean they don't love you, but they may love you differently than you're accustomed to. Or they may show, show their love in different ways than maybe you're accustomed to. I may be with a man that's used to giving me flowers every day. Okay, just using an example. Y'all, I can use this example. Chuck, y'all already know, people that has been watching my videos for a long time, Chuck literally still, even to this day, I can show you right now, Chuck still gives me, I can't find it. 
I can't find them right now, but y'all already know I'm telling the truth, but, um, Chuck still gives me, um, cards every week, every week, Chuck gives me cards to say I love you and stuff, he leaves them around the house like a little scavenger hunt, and all that kind of stuff, y'all already know that, so if I'm accustomed to a man giving me cards every week, okay, maybe twice a week, after three years, if I'm accustomed to that, it's kind of hard to be with a man, not hard, but you're going to be like, oh, wow, why, I wonder why he don't do that, if you be with the next man, and he doesn't never do it ever, he never does it, that doesn't mean he doesn't love you, because he doesn't give you cards like the, the previous person did, are you understanding what I'm saying, he may show his love by taking you to dinner once a week, that's his way of showing you that he loves you, he takes you to dinner every week, that's his way, that's his definition of showing you, that's his decision to say, I want to show her like this, that's his decision, now, does that mean because it's different from the other person that he doesn't love you because it's different, no, that doesn't mean that, it just means that he's giving you what he knows to give you, he's giving you what he defines as love, he's giving you all of what he can give, so, sometimes we have to understand that we can't just always turn everybody away. And it depends. Like I said, you have to weigh, you have to weigh what you should or shouldn't do on, and when you should act like this. But we have to weigh that sometimes just because we're not loved the way we're accustomed to or the way um, we think or the way we define love, then we have to sometimes think about that and not just always push people away just because they can't love you the way that you're accustomed to love being loved and yes that's a level of being spoiled I, I won't I won't lie my mother was a single parent so sometimes single parents do really flood their children with a lot of love to make up for the lack of love they may think that the person will have because of a lack of a parent missing. Are you understand what I'm saying? So, example, my mom may gave me extra love, like really extra, a, a lot of extra love, because my father was absent. So in her eyes, she was trying to make up for it, or give me a double portion in a sense. So I always was treated so highly. Like that's why my self esteem is so high, you guys, because. I always was told, you know, when I would come home and say, Ma, they teasing me in school because I'm fat and all that kind of stuff. My mother would say, child, look at your face. And look at this. That's why they teasing you. They ain't teasing you because you're fat. Yeah, you're a little chunky. But guess what? Look at your face. And they may be small, but look at them. That's what my mom, now y'all can say what y'all want about that, but that's what my mother drilled in my head. My mother would always say, yeah, they, they small. But they mad because they ain't got your face, boo-boo. That's what my mother used to tell me. So that's what I was always... <laughs> I know a lot of people going to have an issue with that because they mad because my mother drilled self-esteem in my head. But whatever. Whatever. <laughs> but it's just that that's how I was raised. And I was always placed high. And I was always told that I'm wonderful. And my mother also told me you know, yes, you're a pretty girl, and yes, you're a little chunky, but guess what? You're smart as a whip, and guess what? You you, you have so many goals, and you're, you're already pursuing them, and all those kind of things. I was selling candy and stuff in school. I was doing this kind of stuff. I was doing this stuff in school, fourth, fifth, sixth grade. Eighth grade, I was being able to pay for all my school clothes and all that kind of stuff. I had... In seventh grade, I had colored contacts and stuff. The ones, not the ones that you get at the hair store now. I'm talking about back in the day, you had to go to the, um, even if it wasn't prescription, you had to go to Lens Crafter and stuff like that and actually get your, um, order them and wait for them to be shipped to them five, seven days, come back and pick them up. Yeah, I had great contacts in seventh grade and stuff. Why? Because I was selling candy and all that kind of stuff in school. That, that was me. That was Kiana, Big Cuz 52 back then okay, so my mom always be like, child, do you know what you're going to be able to, how you're going to be able to um, live and, and the things that you're going to be able to do with this kind of mindset and all that kind of stuff so my mom always told me those kind of things so um, 
you know it, it it just went it just went well you guys and before i go i want to tell you guys um oh he he saw the wedding pictures by the way um he he was uh, he was amazed at all how i actually did the wedding um he knows we're re renewing our vows he wants to walk me down the aisles and i accept that um he walked me down the aisle for my first wedding you guys um yeah, I never told you guys that. Yeah, he walked me down the aisle for my first wedding. But he will be walking me down this time. Um, he's already talked to Chuck about, you know, them setting up an appointment to go look at suits and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so, uh, what else? He also, it, it just touched my heart. He actually thanked Chuck. Because I did let him know that Chuck, for three years has always told me you need to call your dad you need to call and Chuck I'm not gonna lie Chuck always did that always at least I've heard that for three years at least once a week you guys to the point where I used to get mad I used to be like I don't want to hear it no more at Chuck because he always for the last three years at least once a week would mention it so he actually you know was dead serious and he shook Chuck hand and he said I thank you and he hugged him he said, I thank you for actually pr pressing it on Kiana and making sure you kind of pressure her to try to contact me. So, um, it, it that just warmed my heart. And then also, he told Chuck a couple of times in the midst of us laughing and talking, he was like, I feel like I, I, I feel like I could actually cry. He just kept saying that, like, and it was like sporadic. It was like just out the blue. We'd be blah, 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 talking about something that don't even concern that. And then he'd just come out the loop like, I feel like I can cry. So, uh, yeah. So, it was just, it was a good meeting, you guys. It was so good. It was, it really was. Um, he waited till Nene got home from school. Uh, he stayed for five hours, y'all. So, he waited for Nene to get out of school. And Nene came in the door and seen her. And he hugged her and everything. And, uh, they supposed to be going this week. They pick up, he, he want her to have the latest phone and, I'm like, Daddy, for real, because that's how he is. When when he does come back in the picture, that's how my father is. So, um, they supposed to be going to get the latest phone, uh, the one that he got, and all this kind of stuff. My father always got the latest everything, don't even know how to use it. My father got the latest phone. It cost 500 something dollars, he told me, and he don't even know how to text. I was like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's where I get that from, too. Because y'all know I'm not computer savvy at all. I've never even opened up a YouTube account. That's why it's called Big Cuz 52 because this YouTube account was Chuck's. His nickname is Big Cuz, in case y'all don't know that. That's why it's called Big Cuz 52. I never even bothered to open up an account. I just used his because he wasn't using it. That's why it says on there that I've been on YouTube for longer than what I really had. i only been on YouTube. Me, Kiana, only been on YouTube since April, um, August the 14th, and that video is posted and you'll see the date. That's that's first time I was actually on YouTube to do videos. So I just took his account. And that's where I get that not being savvy about computers and all that kind of stuff, le electronics because so I can tell y'all don't even know how to work the um the remote control too good as far as like going to on demand and stuff like that. I'd be like, Chuck, can you put this movie on? Cause I, I have you know why? Cause I have so much in my head and so much I'm doing. It's like, I don't feel like loading my my brain with extra stuff. Like, I remember everything about business. Like, I can remember every order that I've received so far. I can remember your order, the amount, all that kind of stuff. Okay? Um, and by the way, Kim, Kimberly, I just got your large order this morning. So, thank you so much because I know you're probably watching. Um, your name is Kimberly, but your, your YouTube name has Kim in it. So thank you, because I just got it this morning. But I just, uh, it went very well. It really went well. Um, yeah, it went really, it went really well. Um, it went well. And um, he's coming to the party. He's bringing his whole, everybody in the household, Miss Angie, um, everybody that's dead. He's bringing everybody. So you guys will see it some, some way, shape, or form. You guys will see everything because remember I'm going to record there but it's probably going to be in increments of like two minutes at a time so I'll probably upload like three or four of those just so you guys can be in on the, the birthday party and everything my mom is going to be there by the way my mom and my dad are cool like when they when they see each other 
it's like old times. They be talking about all kinds of stuff that 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 happened in the family in the past and all kinds of stuff. They cool like that. They not they not um they not one of those types that uh because he wasn't around that often or he was around sporadically that they uh have like a feud or whatever. No, they not. Um in fact my mom and Miss Angie, when they do go around come around each other, they talk and stuff too. Um and there's no issues or nothing like that. Um because it is what it is and you know it is what it is so um yeah that's it that's it and uh yeah that's it so I hope I filled you guys in the visit was great sorry that this video took so long but I wanted you guys I didn't want y'all to have parts of it and not have you know uh what happened the results uh, stepping out on a limb very quickly why I decided to share this some won't get it some will the reason why I decided to share this first of all if I could share other things and people support me if I could share when I was cussing out or, or talking negative about my husband a year and a half ago or two years almost ago when I first started YouTube and people surrounded me like yeah girl why can't you surround me by something positive? I get that all the time. That I notice that sometimes when when I share those things in the past, when I've shared them, it was, girl, yeah, uh-huh, I'm with you. Mm-hmm. But when I share something that's positive or when I share something that um, is hitting in a direction of growth or hitting in a direction of changing for the better, it's, mm, thumbs down. I don't, yeah, I don't like that. Well, I don't really care to hear that. That's boring. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I already know. But um, for my true riders, I do thank you guys. Why? Because you guys, in a sense, surrounded me and supported me through this. Um, I felt like even though I was uploading the video before you guys, I actually already made the call before you guys even seen the video at that point. Um, actually, I was still on the phone when y'all was viewing because I was on the phone with him for a half an hour. But it was like you guys surrounded me. And I appreciate that because you guys surrounded me with support and I felt that. And um, it was like I had my girls lined up behind me. You know what I'm saying? While I was calling. So I appreciate that, you guys. I really do. And I share it because a lot of people have to, have, uh, have went through a lot of things in their lifetime. And I do believe that when we're on a path of growth, um, sometimes we have to relive or go back to the roots. We need to um, be, if we want to cleanse ourselves, a lot of people want to cleanse their self to lose weight and cleanse their self to look good and cleanse their self for their body to be pure inside. But sometimes we need to mentally cleanse ourselves of some things that's in our past as well. And I shared that moment with you guys and I decided to share that moment with you guys because I wanted you guys people that needed to see it to see that it can be done to see that even despite some pain or some agony that you may felt in the past or some uncertainties or some confusion whatever that was that you may felt if you come to a place that you want to address that or if you want to come to a place that you want to release that or if you come to a place that you want to grow beyond that then you can, despite all of those things, do it. And guess what? You can can be at a level of peace like myself that no matter what happens, and that takes a process, but you can get to a level of peace and you can pray for that level of peace that you have certainty that no matter what happens, no matter what happens, you will be fine. No matter what happens, you will are loved no matter what happens somebody does love you his name is Jesus so I was at a place where no matter what happened in spite of what may happen I was good you understand what I'm saying so that's why I was okay or I wanted to move I wanted to move towards that because I had got to a level where the level of peace I had inside of me, first of all, man didn't give it to me. So therefore, man can't control and take it away. We fall sometimes. We get upset. We lash out. 
we have a reaction to something, but you get right back up. You square those shoulders, you dust that off, and you keep it moving. And that's what level I'm at in my life. Yeah, I may react, but I get up. I get up. And I get up, and you won't even tell that I, that I had an issue just 24 hours ago. Are you understand what I'm saying? That's the level of peace that God gives. That's a supernatural peace. So, since I was at that level, I could go out and reach out to him and not fear not being accepted. Or I, I didn't have to fear rejection. You understand what I'm saying? Because if it was if it would have happened, which I was almost positive it wouldn't, but if it would have happened, Kiana would have been all right. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's why I shared it with you guys. Because I wanted to show you guys the people that it applied to, you can do it. You can do it. It's all about what you decide to do and what you feel in your spirit to do. And that's why I decided to share something that intimate. I tried to share something that, that was that, that was a part of my process. That's why I decided to share it with you guys. So on that note, this video was mad long, but I wanted to fill you guys in on that. I love you all so much. I'm probably going to do some more cooking today. If you did not see how to fix chicken strips and also fried chicken patties out of tofu, make sure you watch that video called Tofu 101. I show you how to do both. Easy, and it was delicious. So on that note, you guys, be blessed.